Hello, my name is Nick and I'm one of the occasional preachers in the parish and this reflection for Tuesday the 16th of February is from St John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 22 to the end. If you'd like to read the passage, please pause the video now. Have you ever been involved in a project, either by yourself or as part of a team, and have made great strides in its development, when along comes someone else or another team, and they take over, and then take the credit for everything when it is delivered? How did you feel? Was it galling this lack of recognition and the unfairness of being ignored and left behind? Or did you have the grace to be pleased that the project was delivered in full and on time and that you knew the part you had played was appreciated by others? The danger we all face in such a situation is that we can become bitter because of the lack of appreciation and recognition of the work we had done. The cry of, it's not fair, may be heard. In John chapter 1, we read about the fulfilment of Isaiah's prophecy of the man, John the Baptist, who would come crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, and the reason for his work of preaching forgiveness and baptising people. Although John states that John the Baptist would see the Son of God when the dove from heaven descends on Jesus. He does not mention that this happened when John baptised Jesus, as we read in Mark's Gospel. This baptism is the culmination of John's work, because now Jesus' work of proclaiming the Gospel starts in earnest, and John's role starts to diminish. He laid the groundwork, built a strong following based on baptism by water, to hand over to Jesus, who baptises us with the Holy Spirit. In this passage, we read about a man who came to John the Baptist to discuss something about ceremonial washing, i.e. purification. This happened when John was preaching and baptising people in the River Jordan at a place called Enon, near Salem, which is halfway between the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee. The conversation turns to the work of Jesus. They came to John. And said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, look, he is baptising and everyone's going to him. There is a clear implication that as John's followers were deserting him and going to follow Jesus, what, would you, what was John going to do about it? And wasn't he annoyed? Would he fight back? In the course Fruitfulness on the Front Line, one of the characteristics we are asked to develop is to be a model of godly character. John's response to the tort or accusation reflects this characteristic. He said, A person can receive only what is given them from heaven. You yourself can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I am sent ahead of him. And then he compares his position to that of a best man at a wedding, who is delighted to support the groom and his bride to ensure the wedding ceremony goes smoothly before the newlyweds set off on their journey of life together. John then says, The joy is mine, and it is now complete. He must become greater, I must become less. There is no bitterness about what is happening. John continues his work, but knows that it will soon come to an end as Jesus' ministry develops and the people will flock to him. Right from the start of John the Baptist's ministry, he knew what he had to do and why. All along, he had been telling the people that he was blazing a trail for the one who is to come. It has now happened. And even in John's delight for Jesus taking over, I'm sure there must have been twinges of regret that his work was no longer needed. Indeed, he had not long to live, for soon after he was arrested by Herod and subsequently killed. John, in his lifetime, may not have received the acknowledgement of the value of his work, but it will never be forgotten. There are many people who work quietly in their churches and parishes for the benefit of others, doing their best to be fruitful on their front lines. 
They do not seek public acknowledgement, but our Father in heaven knows the value of what they do. Let us pray. Father God, may we work for your glory and emulate John the Baptist's delight that we can pave the way for the spreading of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And as you go about your day, here are some thoughts about who or what you might pray for. Please pray for the day and its tasks, for the world and its needs, and for the church and her life. And in particular, we are encouraged to pray for the elderly, the isolated and the vulnerable. May you journey this day in prayer and in the grace and love of God. Enjoy the rest of your day.